Hello everyone, my name is Kimona Sotirkos and right now I'm in the middle of proposing a new web app that we could use for model serving in Kubeflow. So let me take, a, take you to a tour of how this web app looks and how we can utilize it. So here it is, that's a first look of it. You will be able to access it right from the central dashboard of Kubeflow. And its use case is for us to allow to do whatever we could do with kubectl, but only with a UI. No terminal, just the simple clicks. So the first thing we see in this UI is a list of all the inference service objects that exist in my current namespace. My namespace is kubeflow user. And with just a quick look, we can see the most important details that we want to know, like when were, was it created, what is the predictor type of this uh, inference service, its runtime, protocol, storage URI, from where is it getting its data, etc. This would be all successful from doing a kubectl get, but this way we, we can just see everything up front. So let's take a look of an end-to-end -end example of how someone could use the web app from the start to the end. And let's do the first thing that someone would like to do, which is let's create a new model server, which will visualize our model. So let me click create. And over here, we can submit our YAML for our model server. I will need to copy paste one from the ready ones I have. So this is the list from the upstream examples. Let's just pick the TensorFlow Canary one. As you see, it splits the traffic in half. So this is handy. So let me just copy this head over here, we paste our YAML, we can do any last minute modifications we want, say we want 25% traffic for the Canary version, and click create, wait a couple minutes for it, and boom, there it is, it's, it's getting created little by little, and we'll just wait for it to become ready. But while it becomes ready, and it transitions, we can just take a look at the details of the inference service. So, it, by clicking on the or our model server, we can take a brief overview of what's going on over here. Oop, we just saw the the model server becoming live. So over here, we have many tabs that aim to express and provide us all of the useful information we would like for our model server. Everything, again, that we would like to do with kubectl, everything is just straightforward, ready for us to use and see from a UI. In the first overview tab, we can see the live status of the, of, the, of the object. We can see its status and how it's really doing right now in the cluster. We can see if it's ready and how it deduces the status. We can see the URLs that we can use to query and get predictions from our model. We, we can get a brief overview of how many, what kind of components does it use. Does it have a predictor? Does it have an explainer, a transformer? Of course, the storage URI and some basic information. And we can also see the conditions of our objects. Is it ready? Is the predictor ready? Are, are the underlying routes ready? And this is an extra, an extra bonus feature where the uh, inference service uh, object actually creates underlying objects. And with this UI, we're also able to monitor the conditions of all of the underlying owned objects from its component. The predictor will have its own owned object, so we can also take a look at all this information, all those k-native objects, right with just some clicks. And of course, if it gets too, if we see too much information, we, we can just hide them back. So from the overview tab, we can quickly get a feel of what's going on with our model server, but we can very easily and quickly jump around to the details tab, in which we are presented with a, in a more user-friendly way of viewing the actual spec, the, the YAML spec of our object in a, in a more na a, in a friendlier way. So over here, I only had a predictor, so I can only see the spec of my predictor, its storage URI, the canary traffic we configured, the name of the container, the resources it tries to utilize, and also uh, information like the namespace, its name, etc. Of course, for anyone who would like to get a more a, and the exact uh, thing that they would get with kubectl, they can just go and click on YAML, and they can see all of the the entire object with just the way they would see it with kubectl. Everything is there and everything shown in the details as well. The next interesting tab is we can actually see some metrics from our model. This is use, utilizing Grafana under, under the hood, and we can really easily see and understand 
what's going on with the model? How, mu how much resources is it, is it utilizing? Is it using a lot of CPU? Is it, does the memory look okay? Do we have a lot of requests per second for this, uh, inf for this component? Which is pretty neat. And last but not least, a really nice feature is that we can also see the, the logs of the inference service live and really easily, under, which will help us figure out what is going on under the hood. So this is a brief overview of what we can do with this UI. Again, we can navigate back, see our full list of, uh, of objects and select different ones and visualize whichever we want to see. And some things, what I really like about this UI is that everything I would need to do with so many commands in kubectl, I can just I can see all of this information with just simple clicks. I don't have to, to type over and over kubectl get inference services and describe my objects. I can just see all of these things in the UI and allows me to do everything I want as a data scientist without explicitly having to know too much about how to config, talk to a Kubernetes cluster. Well, while uh, this UI seems seems nice, I there are some things that I would like to point out that uh, we would need to improve in the future, but I'm confident that we'll be okay with them. The first thing is that the metrics tab that I showed you earlier is my node up is, is is conditional. So right now in KF serving, we because Knative have disabled and deprecated the the monitoring plugin. KF Serving uh, does not have a monitoring solution for uh, for now. So in most clusters, Grafana will not be installed. So there's no way to actually show these metrics. In these cases, this tab will not exist at all. But I think that the next step that we can start discussion uh, is to decide on how we want to actually expose Grafana, etc. The next thing I think we could really improve over here is the actual form because Right now, I might have said that I don't need to know any Kubernetes stuff, but actually needing to create a YAML means I need to know how to create a Kubernetes object. So this area definitely needs some improvement where this could be a full-fledged form where I could just click and select all the stuff that I want. And of course, if I want, I could modify the YAML, but I should be also greeted with an easy workflow for me to create objects more easily, not just pasting YAML. And last but not least, uh, I'd like to to have uh, this UI to have some more support for filtering what objects objects I can see, so I can, don't just see a big list of all the objects, and I can kind of uh, qu quite easily just filter out which I want. For example, I only want the flower ones or the ones that use TensorFlow. But all these are exciting features that we would really like to work on. So we're confident that we're all of these are going to be in, in a future roadmap so please stay tuned to it so that's pretty much the the ui i hope you're also excited for it as much as i am and please give me your feedback on what else you would like to see on it